For this first stoichiometry example, we have a reaction where C3H8, we've got an com organic combustion reaction, so it's going to form carbon dioxide and water. So the first thing we need to do is balance this. So if we put a 1, a 5, a 3, and a 4, we could get that guy to balance. So this problem says we're given 132 grams of C3H8 and enough oxygen to complete the reaction how many grams of water would be produced. So you don't have to worry about running out of oxygen. Apparently we have plenty. But the reaction is going to stop as soon as we run out of those 132 grams of C3H8. Once those 132 grams have been converted over into carbon dioxide and water, the reaction is going to stop because we're going to run out of one of our reactants. So. All stoichiometry problems, we're always going to start with our given over the number 1. So we've got 132 grams of C3H8. We're going to put that over the number 1. Now if we look at our flow chart and say, what are we going to do with that? Our first step is to get that amount and get it into moles. So our substance happens to be in grams right now. So to get from grams to moles, we need the molar mass of that substance on the periodic table. So if you were to look at a periodic table and get the masses of carbon and hydrogen, each carbon has a molar mass of 12 and each hydrogen has a mass of 1. So if we add up 3 carbons and 8 hydrogens, that would have a molar mass of 44 grams per mole. I'm going to put that 44 on the bottom and the 1 mole on the top so that way my grams and grams can cancel out. Well, just one more time, that 44, where did that come from? Well, you've got three carbons that would weigh about 12 grams a piece, so that part would weigh 36 grams. You have eight hydrogens that weigh a gram a piece, so that part weighs eight. You add them together and you get the 44. Right now that looks like, like a mold problem that you did before, where we got our substance from grams into moles and we used to stop there, but now we're going to keep going. Now we're going to use our balanced equation to get from chemical A to chemical B. So in this case, in this problem, we're at C3H8 and we're trying to get to water. So we're going to look at the mole ratios between C3H8 and water. It's a 1 to 4 ratio. Because I want my moles of C3H8 to cancel out and go away, I'm going to put the 1 on the bottom and say for every one mole's worth of C3H8, I'm going to make four moles worth of water. This problem wants me to get to grams of water. So right now in the flow chart, we're on step three, and we need to get to step four, the grams of water. Well, in order to get here, we need a conversion factor again. To get to grams, we need the molar mass on the periodic table. But this time it isn't C3H8. This time it's water that we're talking about. So you would say, well, water has two H's and one O. The molar mass of hydrogen is one gram. Molar mass of oxygen is about 16. So we'd add up those pieces and get a molar mass of 18 grams. Because I want my moles part to cancel out and go away, I'm going to put one mole of water on the bottom, weighs 18 grams. Now everything's going to cancel out except for my grams of water. Grams of C3H8 are gone, moles of C3H8 are gone, moles of water are gone. I'm just left with grams of water. We multiply across and you would get 216 grams worth of water. So as soon as we hit that number 216, 
the reaction would stop. You wouldn't be able to make 217 grams worth of water because as soon as you hit that 216, you've completely run out of this 132 grams of C3H8. If you run out of one of your reactants, the, the reaction's going to stop. Just like if you were baking cookies and you ran out of eggs, you can't make a batch without the one of the necessary ingredients.